So it's been over two years since I've covered the iPhone 5S in a late style review. As of right now, some people deem it obsolete and speculate it will not be receiving iOS 13 updates, but I'm here to tell you it still packs a hell of a punch even five, six years later, and is certainly not dead. So even with their age, the iPhone 5, and in this case, the iPhone 5S will always sport an iconic design. Its rectangular and angular design is still stunning till this day, especially with the Apple style chamfered edge, and many are saying it actually inspired the iPad Pro's new industrial look. In short, the iPhone 5S's design, which sports metal and glass, still holds up to the top dogs of today from Apple and other companies, even with their glass backs. This phone is a pleasure to hold and is just beautiful to look at. It's funny, I actually find my iPhone 5S's display brighter than my 10S Max's. Maybe that's a limitation of OLED. But what I can say is this display still thrives in 2019. It packs a decent uh, pixel density at 326, which is the same as the iPhone 10R and the iPhone 8. Colors also seem vibrant and contrasty on this IPS display, even when compared to, once again, my iPhone 10S Max's OLED display. Although the screen is quite a bit smaller than most flagships of today, just four inches diagonally, it will do the trick for some media consumption for the most part, but I will tell you widescreen video, especially in like more modern aspect ratios like 18 by nine just looks a bit weird. So the only real big negative with this phone is the battery life. And for the most part, that's just because if you're gonna buy this used or you're using one that you've been using for a couple of years, the battery is likely to be uh, significantly deteriorated. And I'm not saying like you can't like use the phone, it's not gonna like die on you within 30 minutes, but I'm saying like you're probably gonna get like two to three hours of screen on time, but that's okay if you're gonna be okay with uh, carrying a bunch of uh, external battery packs or using a battery case. But I mean like if you're just going out of the house for a few hours, you should be fine to just, you know, use your phone without any extra help. Uh, this is more for like longer car trips. I would recommend bringing some external batteries and whatnot. And the only good quality about the battery I can say as of right now is that it charges very, very quickly. But I'm sure that if you were to buy one new, uh, your mileage will vary. It'll probably be better. But again, this is a smaller battery. I think it's like in the 1700s of milliamp hours. So not the best battery life, especially if used. So in regard to the iPhone 5S's camera, I would compare its image quality to that of maybe like a $200 smartphone of today. It's still great. I mean, like, especially in good lighting, but you'll notice that compared to modern smartphones, it doesn't really do well in low light and just it's, you know, it has some grain, you know, it's just an aged device. Remember this device was uh, launched in 2013 image quality has skyrocketed since then. And I would say if you're not really dabbling in smartphone photography on the regular, this device, especially at its price, is perfect for you. Uh, FaceTime still looks great. I mean, you don't really need the highest quality camera for video chatting. Selfies are all right. And I mean, overall, the camera quality is adequate and will do the job in 2019. And I just wanna add that there's literally no shutter lag when you're taking pictures with this phone, which is really nice. I mean, some budget phones of today have shutter lag, um, but no, not this device. And I think that has to do with the Apple A7, which brings us to our next topic, which is performance. And speaking of the Apple A7, it was the first 64-bit processor from Apple accompanied with a gig of RAM. And I believe this spec sheet has allowed this phone to thrive for as long as it has. Is this phone the quickest? No. Do some apps take a little bit to open? Yes. But considering you can pick this phone up for $75-ish on eBay, and also considering its age, it's almost five uh, going on six years old, and also remember that there's been five iterations of new Apple processors that have come after this phone, it really does handle itself damn well in a market where some phones like the 10S Max pack a processor which rivals laptop chipsets. The only real gripe I have about the performance of this phone is with multitasking and gaming, and that's to be expected with the specs that this phone packs as of this year. Uh, with multitasking, it only has a single gig of RAM to work with, and with more you know, intensive web pages and games that you might download, uh, things are gonna be refreshing a little more often. As for gaming, I mean, your mileage may vary depending on what kind of games you play, but some simpler titles I was playing kind of struggled just a little bit, you know, some drop frames here and there, but that's like with really recent titles. I mean, if you want to play like Angry Birds or Doodle Jump, you should have absolutely no problem with that. But with some things, you know, more intensive games, you're going to notice some choppiness. But once again, that's to be expected with a five to six year old device. But for menial tasks, you know, like communication through iMessage and FaceTime and media consumption, you know, scrolling through Instagram and going on YouTube, the typical stuff you would do, this phone is still amazing for all of that, especially considering its age and the price you can pick it up at. And also before I forget to mention, Touch ID first generation is still plenty fast, and I would even say it rivals or even uh, is equivalent to that of the speed of Face ID with the 10R, the 10, the 10S, and the 10S Max. 
So this update has not only made this device more worthwhile, but has given it a fighting chance in receiving the iOS 13 update this fall. Let's just cross our fingers that Apple will spare this device one more year, especially considering its awesome performance despite all the odds. So yeah, all in all, as of 2019, the iPhone 5S has certainly proven itself the iPhone with the most longevity and is certainly not a dead device. So yeah, I hope this video helped you out. I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like in the video, comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.